Hello and welcome to FEM Expert. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to perform the harmonic analysis of a connecting engine road made with volume type elements. So for that, we're going to go to answers and we're going to start here. The first, uh, the first steps here would be going to file, import, parasolid, since we're going to import this, this road from a 3D model because it was made in another program. So we're going to import in parasolid format. We're going to hit OK. You might get some warnings. You got to be careful with these warnings because a lot of the times ANSYS is not capable of translating the geometric characteristics of the original 3D model. You might have like very big errors there and your component might be not usable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to change the title we have that, that it has it here as always shows you the address where this parasol has been imported so we do slash title comma then one of the things that you will be able to see is if you v plot a plot you always see this wireframe so in order to change this wireframe this wireframe happens takes place when we import the model you do the face it normal slash face it normal when you see the component, you'll see it under uh, as a regular area. If you get if your component has errors that ANSYS cannot correct or areas that ANSYS cannot present or uh, represent, you'll get errors and most likely you'll see like gaps or something like that in your component. So from now on, what we'll have to do is we have this as a volume model. We're going to go to define. We're going to do everything from the command line, most of the things from the command line, we're going to do the element type. The element type number one is going to be solid 185. We're going to, we have to define the units for this. You have to normally measure the distances and see what the units are. In general, they're meters, but just in case, we're going to do a kdist, comma p. We're going to select two points and you can contrast the distance, these distances with your distances. So on the, the x direction, we have three this would be 30 millimeters so we know we are in meters so from that on, from that on we're going to go to material properties density is going to be aluminum for material one 2750 kilograms per cubic meter material properties ex young's modulus for material number one 2.1 sorry 6.9 e 10 pascals and material properties PRXY Poisson's coefficient for material number one, 0 0.33. So now that we have the material defined, we would have to just uh, uh, mesh this model. In order to do that, we're gonna go and define the size first. Each size is gonna be two millimeters, so two divided by a thousand. And if we go and just try to do the mesh, V mesh, comma P, we select the element and it's not going to let us do it. It, it would not work with hexahedral meshing, neither the meshing with the sweep, which we could do with V sweep, but we're gonna try it here. So this one, it, it would not even work because the ANSYS measure is not capable of do, performing those more complex meshings that other, pro, pro, other programs, more modern programs are capable of doing. Uh, ANSYS Workbench will be able to mesh this correctly, but we are working on ANSYS right now, so this is not what we're going to do. The option that we have is going to volumes and mesh with tetrahedrals. There's a big, um, there's a big concern on the tetrahedral meshings there's uh, opposers and there's people that like them. There's all kinds of scientific articles that say that they're not good and there's article, scientific articles that say they're not as bad. So they are a, an element that you can use. You just have to be careful how you use it when you use it. Uh, once we finish this meshing, we can go and check mesh individual elements and we can plot the elements, go okay. And you'll see that we have a number of elements. I think it said there, there were three that have a warning or an error, especially warnings. If you have errors, it will not really let you perform the simulation. And uh, there are three elements. The program is telling you, well, these three elements that you have here, are they don't have an optimum shape or their shape is a little bit too degraded. So just be careful with the with the simulation. We we will ignore that. If, you, if you, those elements are in your areas of interest, you will have to perform more complex meshing uh, 
configurations, let's say like that, and uh, this is not the scope of this tutorial. So from now on, what we're going to do, we're gonna work in area, we're gonna do a plot, and we're gonna put a da comma p, we're gonna go to the da comma p for putting a restriction on this area, we're gonna restrict this area with a value of zero, like we're embedding that area, and we're gonna apply a pressure on the top of the connecting road. So for that, we're gonna go to solution, define loads, apply structural pressure on areas. We're gonna hit this area and hit okay. And the value is gonna be 25, it's gonna be 50 E5. Pascals, that would be 50 uh, atmo atmospheric pressures, 50 times the atmospheric pressure kind of like a value that you would be obtaining in an engine in one of those explosions, and we're gonna hit OK. The pressure looks like a surface, so we have to go and look the plot control symbol, and under the show pressure as and convect as, we put arrows instead of um, surfaces. The problem here is that we don't know the pressures are introduced according to the normal of the surface of each surface, but since this model has been imported, we do not know how the normal of that surface is. But since we change this, we can see that the pressure is correctly introduced this way, and we can use this as the solution model. So from now on, what we will have to do is just perform the simulation. For We're going to go to solution, analysis type, new analysis, we're gonna do, go to harmonic, we're gonna hit OK, and the harmonic analysis is gonna simulate what happens with the, the rod when we put this pressure at a certain frequency. So here we're gonna go and do the analysis option. We're gonna look, you can do the analysis option for real and imaginary, it's gonna be a full simulation, it's gonna be OK. This is gonna, we just hit OK there. Where we're gonna to go to the loads and, and load and step options, the time and frequency, the frequency and sub steps. We're gonna go from 1,500 hertz to 4,000 hertz, and we're gonna do it on 500 steps. You can choose more steps, you can choose less steps. It just will vary the precision of your results and also the time of the simulation. Do not forget that each simulation of this 500 is a complete simulation of the rod. We're gonna do that, and then we also have to go into the output controls, the solution printout, and we can decide how many times we're gonna save the data, and I'm going to do it every sub-step to have all the information. If you know, or if you have more data from a model previous analysis, you can do it every end steps or the last sub-step if you don't care about the intermediate results. So we're gonna go do okay, and then we'll just hit solo solve. You're gonna get two warnings, and we're just gonna ignore, the, we're just gonna ignore those warnings, they're basically because of the type of element and the tetrahedral mesh. So we just hit yes, and now we have to wait for the simulation to finish. So now we have the simulation has completed, and we're gonna go and analyze the, in the data. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to general processing. We can look at the data by peak. So here we would have all of the frequencies, each one of the frequency that has been simulated and in by increments of five, and we have two, uh, two sets. One is the real component of the equation, and the other one is the imaginary component of the equation. In order to see the result, we have to read the real, which are the first ones, but we don't know which is the frequency that's making the structure uh, um, being in a, having an increased reaction. Sorry, being in which one is the free, uh, the model frequency. So in order to, to look at that, we're going to go to time his post processing, and we're going to plot the displacement. We can plot x or z or y. I'm going to plot y z on this location and another one, for example, more at the bottom. So with these two graphs, I'm going to go and do the graph data. So as you can see, we have one frequency here, which is the uh, around 2000, between 2250 and 2500. In order to have evaluate these results in a better way, we can go to plot controls, style, graphs, 
we can modify the axis and we're going to do the axis, the y axis as logarithmic. We're going to hit OK and we plot again the graphic. So here we have, we have a, one of these is the frequency. We have the model frequency at this place because you see the reaction, the reaction of the, of the structure, it increases significantly at this point at this value of frequency. Then we have an anti-frequency here, which probably corresponds to another second frequency, but we're just going to look at this one. In order to obtain the exact value of this frequency that we obtain, we have to go to list the data. And here we have to look between 2250 and 2500, a modification of the, of the phase, which is this column. So 2,250, it's above 2,250. So we just look for 2,250. We have it here, so the phase is zero. And now we look for the first value where the phase has changed. So it's 2,390. So we're gonna look at this mode, mode shape. We're gonna uh, evaluate how is the shape on that, uh, that moment. So we're gonna close this. And we're going to go to general post-processing by peak and we're going to go to the 2,290. 2,390. We pick up the first one, read it, and then PL and sold. You soon to see the displacement. So here it is. This is how the, the connecting rod is it's uh, deforming, so we'll look at the Pilivec U. So it's interesting, and as you might see, it's going backwards. So we're going to look at this in an animation, we're going to animate the mode. We're going to do then a, a plot, plot controls, animation, mode shape. It's going to be 20, 0 0.2, and degrees of freedom, we're going to choose the use zoom. If you cannot see exactly what's happening, you can stop it. You have to stop it, modify the position and go again and do animate mode shape and OK. So as you might see, the effect of this compressing force, it determines the sideways or the displacement on X of the connecting rod. Uh, if you analyze more frequencies, you'll see there are interesting effects. In some places, you might have the twisting, and some for some other frequencies, although you're introducing this force actually in Y, you're compressing the rod, the frequency has a direct effect on the deformation, but that wouldn't be the, will, will present some other results on a little bit more simplified structure, not with so many elements, because you have to take in mind that when you're simulating volume elements, it becomes a it, be, an, it becomes an issue to simulate the, the the size on the disk. Basically, the simulation process will take a long time, and then you will have a lot of information on the disk. For example, the results for this simulation that we performed are around 30 gigabytes of results. So that will be it for today's tutorial. We thank you for your attention. If you enjoy our tutorials, please subscribe to our channel and like the and hit the like button.